January 6th has been mentioned. A dark day for America indeed. And I'm sure Congresswoman Pelosi will agree that the entire month of June 2020, when the federal courthouse in Portland, Oregon, was under siege and under insurrection by radical progressives, those two were dark days for America. Yes? There is no equivalence there. So, but yeah. So you don't agree? And it's fine, you don't agree, that's fine. At Oxford University in merry old England, they have a tradition of debates, you know, the Oxford Union. They do debates all the time. Although, now that they've got cameras in that grand historic chamber, these debates have sort of gone viral. And this latest one, from over the weekend was pretty amazing. It featured a yank, Nancy Pelosi of all people. I don't like using the word yank when I say Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi took the affirmative on an issue. The issue that they were debating was this, and I'll read it to you. This house believes populism is a threat to democracy. And there was Nancy Pelosi speaking in favor of the motion. That's by the way, nonsensical, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Speaking uh, against that proposal in opposition was none other than Winston Marshall. He's the former banjo player from Mumford & Sons. I just learned that researching this segment. I saw the video going viral over the weekend, and I had no idea this guy was a banjo player from Mumford & Sons. Well, he goes on for about 20 minutes, and you should really check out the whole video for yourself. But here's a good highlight of it. He first approaches the fact that the left loves to change the definition of words. Because if you think about it, populism being a threat to democracy makes absolutely no sense. Because populism, frankly, is democracy. In fact, if you look at the the definition of populism, I'll share it with you right now. It, it, It literally means a political approach that strives to appeal to ordinary people who feel that their concerns are disregarded by established elite groups. In other words, populism is meant to appeal to the populace so that they can have a voice. That's literally democracy. And you have a Democrat opposing populism, saying that it's fascism. So so take a look at this. This is a great compilation put together by our uh, fantastic producer, Kevin McMahon that shows you uh, the fundamental flaw in this argument and that it literally changes and warps the meaning of commonly understood words, which is what the left does. When I was a boy, woman meant someone who didn't have a cock. Populism has become a word used synonymously with racists. We've heard ethno-nationalists, with bigot, with hillbilly, redneck with deplorables. Elites use it to show their contempt for ordinary people. January 6th has been mentioned. A dark day for America indeed. And I'm sure Congresswoman Pelosi will agree that the entire month of June 2020, when the federal courthouse in Portland, Oregon was under siege and under insurrection by radical progressives, those two were dark days for America. There is no equivalence there. So, but yes. So you don't agree? And it's fine. You don't agree. That's fine. But it is not what, what happened on January 6th, which was an insurrection incited by the president of the United States. I'm actually rather surprised that our esteemed opposition congressman Pelosi is on that side of the motion. I thought the left was supposed to be anti-elite. I thought the left was supposed to be anti-establishment. Today, particularly in America, the globalist left have become the establishment. I suppose for Ms. Pelosi to have taken this side of the motion, she'd be arguing herself out of a job. If President Biden has shown us anything, we need someone to run the countries. When the president has severe dementia, (laughs) it's not just America that crumbles, the whole world burns. Throughout the pandemic, Biden's team, the FBI, and the Department of Homeland Security colluded with big tech in censoring dissenting voices, not kooky conspiracy theorists. Before COVID, intelligence services colluded with big tech to have Trump suspended off Twitter. Yes, the same platform which hosted the Taliban and Ayatollah deaf to Israel Khomeini, they thought the president crossed the line when he tweeted on Jan 6th, remain peaceful, no violence, 
respect the law and our great men and women in blue. You may be thinking now that Trump is a populist. You are right. He didn't accept the 2020 elections and he should have. So should Hillary in 2016, so should Brussels, and so should Westminster in 2016, and so too should Congresswoman Pelosi, instead of saying the 2016 election was, quote, hijacked. Oh, by the way, she went on to say it was, it was hijacked, but that doesn't mean you don't accept it. Oh, oh, that's the difference. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, great job. And again, Winston Marshall goes on. It's about uh, between 17 and 20 minutes and you should watch the whole thing. Uh, but when he talked about social media there, he was supporting one of his arguments he made. I want to read it to you. He says, uh, populism is not a threat to democracy, but I'll tell you what is. It's elites ordering social ordering social media to censor political opponents. It's police shutting down dissenters. That's the threat to democracy. Populism literally is democracy. I, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone right now. Maybe I'm I'm just too old, but I remember presidential elections back in like the early 90s when Bill Clinton was accused of being a populist at one point. Richard Gephardt, remember Dick Gephardt? He was the majority leader for the House of Representatives for the Democrats, congressman out of Missouri, back when Missouri would elect Democrats. I guess they've got one now, Cori Bush out of St. Louis, but she's a whack job. Uh, Dick Gephardt was a populist. Dick Gephardt represented unions, uh, blue collar guys, agriculture, farmers, you know, Americans. And he was a populist. Democrats were the populists. And now things have completely reversed around. I don't know what happened. I don't know what started it, whether it was Pat Buchanan or Ross Perot or Donald Trump. But populism isn't a bad thing in and of itself. Populism is a political movement that gives voice to those who feel they don't have a voice. Now, you would be forgiven if you believe, well, wasn't that Barack Obama? I mean, look at all those massive rallies he had and the hope and change. And yes, we can. It was very populist, wasn't it? Not really. Not if you really think about how he ran for office and certainly how he governed. Yes, he was popular. But that's not the same as populism. Populism, as I say, and I'll say it again, gives voice to the masses and the people so that they can once again be heard over the elites and the establishment. That's populism. That's how it's defined. Go ahead and look at your dictionary before they change the definition like they did with the definition of vaccine. But if you think about what Barack Obama said in those rallies in 2008, when he had all the hordes of people, the message he was selling was actually not populism. It wasn't power to the people. What was the most famous line that he had, I think? Were, are you ready to fundamentally change the United States of America? The other one that I'll always remember, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We're the elite. We're the special ones. We're going to get in there and we're going to fix everything because of our our Harvard degree or our, you know, high end uh, graced from God anointed vision and knowledge. That's that's not populism. That's we know better than the rest of you. You put us in power and we'll do all the thinking for you, poor people. Let's not forget what he was also caught saying off mic during a fundraiser in the 2008 campaign. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't have to remind you of what he said, because when Nancy Pelosi had her turn in this debate, she basically said the same thing. Nancy Pelosi in arguing that populism is a threat to democracy, revealed exactly how elite she and her party are. They're not about democracy. They're about the chosen flu who know better than the rest of us. And they must correct our instincts to actually follow our hearts and follow our principles and follow our values. Don't believe me? Take a look at what she said. Of these poor souls who are looking for some answers. We've given them to them, but they're blocked by some of their views on guns. They have the three Gs, guns, gays, God, that would be a woman's right to choose. And 
and the cultural issues cloud some of their reception, reception of an argument that really is in their interest. Wow, the, the work of the claw there, the talon, is really a little distracting. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at this a little bit further because it's a very short clip. And when it's very short, I don't mind breaking it down. But boy, is that revelatory. And of course, now you know what I was referring to with Barack Obama. He was caught on microphone at a fundraiser saying uh, uh, saying that these uh, Americans are clinging to their guns and their Bibles. Remember, speaking derisively. I'm not going to be able to convince every American in this country. There's still a lot of them who cling to their guns and their Bibles. That was a fundraiser, by the way, in Nancy Pelosi's San Francisco. This is you they're talking about. God, guns, God, and gays. That's actually a direct quote from Howard Dean, who, by the way, was also called a populist at the time uh, when he ran for the nomination in 2004 against John Kerry, who ended up getting the nomination. That's Howard Dean. Then he became the chairman of the Democratic National Committee and created the infrastructure that allowed for Barack Obama to become the nominee. He's a smart politician, and he would speak derisively of Americans about the guns, God, and gays. That's what's keeping you, as Nancy Pelosi says it here, uh, from actually understanding that we know best for you. Listen to how she talks about you. Listen to how she talks about the American people. It's quite revealing. Of these poor souls. Poor souls. You poor soul. I pity you. I'm so much better than you, and you're just desperate. These poor souls. Who are looking for some answers. We've given them to them, but they're blocked by some of their views on guns. So they're looking for answers, these poor souls, and we've given them to them but they're blocked. They're blocked. Can I just explain once again and remind you that Nancy Pelosi has been in public life and has held elected office, I believe, since the Lincoln administration, or at the very least, let's just say for over 30 years. And Nancy Pelosi acknowledges that there are people out there who are looking for answers. I got to say, ma'am, if, if you're into your 80s now, what is she, 83, 84 and she still hasn't been able to deliver answers for people, maybe she should step down. I mean, I, mean, I know it's a humble suggestion. But you're blocked, you see. Let's go back and so, to explain how you're blocked from seeing the answers the Democrats have provided. Their views on guns. They have the three Gs, guns, gays, God. That was Guns, gays, and God. Now, guns are pretty obvious, and gays are pretty obvious. By the way, have you noticed that these three issues are also the issues that they're willing to die on the hill for. Have you noticed that they keep saying, oh, the gun issue is blocking Americans, that if only they could just get over their gun thing. They're the ones who keep pushing gun control. They're the ones who keep trying to undermine your Second Amendment. I mean, if you really want to take the gun thing off the table and appeal to people, if you really think that's the problem, why don't you stop trying to take people's guns? The Supreme Court says you can't do it anyway. You've lost every time it goes to the Supreme Court. But of course, they love the division. They love having that issue. They raise money for it, but also they can marginalize people with it. They're the one that, as usual with the left, they are revealing where they are on these things. The gay thing is blocking people. They're the ones who are pushing the gay thing at all times, whether it's redefining what marriage means or pushing, well, it's not even gay anymore. It's full on transgender topics where the meaning of men and women don't even mean anything anymore. And then God. And, and look at how she redefines what God means. You see, the, the fact of the matter is there is a God divide in this country. It has to do with people who take their religious faith seriously, the scriptures of their religious faith seriously, as well as the doctrines that their individual church uh, requires them to live up to, uh, whether it's scripture-based or if you're Catholic from the teaching of your church. Uh, in addition to scripture, by the way, don't you say I don't care about the scripture if I'm Catholic. The point is the God divide in this country has to do with people who actually take their faith seriously and the people like Nancy Pelosi who just give it lip service. See, but how does she identify the God issue? Oh, this is, again, incredibly revealing, Speaker Pelosi. They have the three Gs, guns, gays, God. That would be a woman's right to choose. The God issue, from Nancy Pelosi's perspective, is boiled down to abortion. That's it. Which I find hilarious because...
frankly, I think that the best arguments in favor of protecting unborn babies from murder have nothing to do with God. Because, see, it's kind of hard to prove God, and let's not even get into the theological debate. I'm not pro-life because I'm a believing Christian. I mean, it's I think I'm a believing Christian because I'm pro-life, frankly, or they go hand in hand, certainly, but that's not the argument I would make. I'm pro-life because I'm a believing, I believe in science. An unborn child is, I mean, here we go. Now we're going to get dinged on YouTube, right? The second I bring up this issue, we're going to have a little notice so that you can get the facts about abortion. It's so stupid. This is all I have to say that is going to get us dinged on YouTube with a little statement about abortion. An unborn child, fetus, let's use their word. An unborn fetus is a human life. You know that it is. It has separate DNA from its mother. It grows, which means that it is life. It is growing into a human being, obviously. Uh, the question is scientifically that from the very moment it's fertilized, that egg is a human life at a different stage of human life. The only question that we have before us as a society is what value we put on that human life as it gestates and grows. Uh, some people would not give it any value right up until birth, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Others would give it infinite life just like anyone else from the moment of fertilization. This is something certainly that needs to be debated. But this one over here, this one thinks that to be pro-life, to be against abortion, you must believe in God, which is, again, incredibly revealing that that's uh, gu guns, gays, and gods, but that's really just a woman's right to choose. And, and the cultural issues cloud some of their reception, reception of an argument that really is in their interest. If I could, Madam Speaker, and we'll just leave it at this. Uh, by the way, great job uh, by Winston Marshall in this debate. Watch the whole thing. He's fantastic. The fact that the Democratic Party is now in a position where Democrats are publicly debating against populism and saying populism is contrary to democracy. When populism literally is democracy, it's the people having a voice to choose their own destiny. You know how far we've come in this country. And Madam Speaker, if I may, I assure you that our opposition to you and your ideas and your agenda are not just boiled down to, as you put it, the three G's. Uh, the three G's are a symptom of the disease the left has brought to this country, but certainly not the disease in and of itself. The problem is you believe in the state and we believe in the people. Call it populism, if you will, but I'd rather be on that side of the equation than on your side of the equation, because here's the thing, between you and Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders and the Clintons and all the other dinosaurs that you call friends, you've had your way, you've been in charge, you've been able to create this entire giant government infrastructure, and guess what? It still hasn't fixed the problems. So maybe, just maybe, when we evaluate your job performance, it's not your position on guns, gays, and gods. It's your position on everything. And the fact that your track record is nothing but utter failure.